Well, as a 2013 Notre Dame grad, our next guest has had a huge role in making my senior year a memorable one. During the 2012 season, these three were key contributors along the offensive and defensive lines, leading the Irish to a 12-0 regular season and the BCS National Championship game. I'm pleased to welcome Catherine Lewis-Moore, Braxton Cave, and Mike Golick Jr. to the program. Guys, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Catherine, I actually want to start with you. You were a three-year starter at defensive end, one of the four team captains that 2012 season. You guys were coming off back-to-back -back eight and five years under Coach Brian Kelly. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea that 2012 would be so different? Uh, honestly, I, I don't. I don't know. I, th I think we were. I think we were just excited. I mean, for me, I guess I could speak for Braxton and go. I think we were just excited to be back. You know, fifth years, kind of being the old heads on the team. So that was. The one thing I was really looking forward to, just kind of going out that last year, just kind of having as much fun as possible. But, you know, I think uh, after, I would say kind of after during training camp, we kind of realized that we were going to be a pretty solid team. So, And Braxton, you grew up down the road in Mishawaka, played your high school ball at Penn and became a yeah. starting center for the Irish. Like the team this year was supposed to, at least, you guys started that year in Ireland. What's that experience like for a player, and what are some of the highlights you remember? You know, it, for me, I had never really traveled outside of going to Mexico on, like, spring break. I had never really traveled abroad or, or gotten out um, of Indiana or Florida. That was kind of the extent of, of my travel. So to be able to do that in a special year, and, you know, as Cap just said, um, being the fifth-year guys and, you know, coming in as freshmen, we had that number one recruiting class in the country. Um, obviously didn't get it done in our fourth year. So coming back in our fifth year, we felt like we had some unfinished business and, you know, we, we really rallied to have a good team that year. So starting out in Ireland, it was a great trip. Uh, things I can remember is uh, being super uncomfortable on a really long plane ride. <laughs> um, I remember Mike, you might know, I, we probably ate a hundred Uncrustables on this trip. We were like, <laughs> You know, the food, the food we had was good there, but um, we were a little nervous, right, of what we were going to put in our system. So we pretty much lived on peanut butter and jellies. <laughs> well, like, and that's because that's the thing is uh, every football coach wants to keep everything the same. So no matter where we went, whether it was, you know, you know, West Lafayette or, or Southern California or back at home, like they had the same stuff for us at every spot. So we were just loading up extra on all that. Me and Braxton used to always room together on the road. And whenever someone would get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, you would hear them step on like eight Uncrustables or Rice Krispie Treat wrappers that we would just throw in between the bed. So we went in on those that week for sure. So wait, that, that, that spurred something. That is a long flight. I made that trip as well. But you guys are significantly larger than I was back then. Uh, what's the plane situation like for, for 85 guys on a football team, 100 guys on a football team, whatever the traveling party is? On that cross Atlantic, would it be like two to like every if there was two seats and like one person would sit there, and if we were on the floor, there would be two people in there, right? Yeah, so. which I'm like like very high key salty about because I remember years later seeing when like Matthias Farley and those guys were captains and seniors, and they had those like nice first class. Yes, I, yes. I was like, oh, okay, so we, we go we go to one BCS title game, and everyone gets to act brand new yeah. out here. Yes. Oh, man. All right, Mike, arguably part of the first family at Notre Dame. You filled in at center when Braxton was injured, started at guard in 2012. You guys played a lot of tight games that year. I think five of them were decided by a single possession. Which game that season stands out to you eight years later? Pitt. <laughs> like, I just sit, sitting there at the beginning of that game. I just remember at one point, because I the one thing was, and I, I will say this team was remarkably calm in those situations. I think just because everybody had confidence. Like, we knew we had the number one defense in the country on the other side of the ball, and so they were going to handle their business. And we would sit over there on the sideline, and Harry Eastan, our offensive line coach, made sure we were just worried about what we were getting ready to do that next drive. The mentality was score every drive. But there was one moment I remember just looking up at the scoreboard when we're down three touchdowns to pit. I was like, we're really about to lose an undefeated season to this pit team. 
<laughs> just kind of sitting there with disbelief, and then you know everything happened, and that mentality paid off. But that was the one time where I looked up and I was like, "Man, not not for this one. Like we're not going to lose it for this one." <laughs> What's going through your mind on those field goal attempts? Because I was stressed out in the stands. I can't imagine what it was like for you guys. I think for me, that laugh on. I remember that whole game was a blur, but I remember just like. I really like, man, we really about to, there goes the national championship and everything. And then when that guy missed it, I was like, that's what I was like. All right, we have to win this game. Like, that's We have to win this game. There's no if, ands, or what about it. Because I, rem- I just remember that one moment. I thought it was just a wrap. Like, you know, sad. And all of a sudden, everybody goes crazy. And they're like, whoa. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cap, Mike just brought up the, the defense. And number one defense in the country. One of the moments that jumped out to me that year was that game against Stanford. Maybe my favorite Notre Dame football memory. Game day in town. It's pouring. Game goes to overtime. And that goal line stand that you guys had was just unbelievable. What do you remember about those four plays? <laughs> I hate to tell you, but that last play, and you know, I'll be going go like a back you know, like, you know, <laughs> You know, we're submarining. You know, we're going, we're coming, to, we're coming at the shin guards. And I just remember, hey, just just try to drive back as far as I can, just kind of go straight at the knee, or not the knee, but kind of just get low. And as soon as that ball moved, I just went down. And then next thing I know, just hear the crowd just go absolutely wild. And that's when I knew, like, on the bottom of the pile, like, oh my God, we actually really stopped. Like, <laughs> It was, it was awesome. That was that was that was definitely uh, that's definitely best memory for me. Obviously, yeah. Braxton. A couple of weeks after that game, you guys go to Norman, Oklahoma, and beat the Sooners. Which until November seventh this year was probably the biggest turn Coach Kelly's Notre Dame tenure. Tell us about that game and that that build up where you guys were the higher rated team, but we're big underdogs going in at least nationally. Yeah, I mean, and we knew that going into it, and we we went into it with a great scheme. Um, we again, like Mike said, we knew the defense was going to handle what they needed to, and it was up to us to put up points. And you know, we we really got into a groove. I think even early, I think you uh, you know we busted a long run, um, and we really just controlled the line of scrimmage and ran the ball really well. That game was. Um, I personally had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder for that one because my wife's family. Um, is all from the South. So there's a lot of suitors and so it felt good to kind of, you know, go down there and and beat down on them pretty good in their own in their own stadium. But I will tell you this, unbelievable environment, great stadium, great, great crowd, great fans. Um, but I think after we won that one, it really, you know, we were in the locker room afterwards and we're like, you know, we we got something really special here. I think that kind of solidified it. It did. Mike, I want to jump ahead to the regular season finale that year. You guys head to Los Angeles to take on USC. You know if you win that you're going to South Beach. From the outside, that seems like that's a ton of pressure in that week build up on your flight, on your walkthroughs, all that. What was the build up to that game like inside the goop? Yeah, I mean, SD week is always something that's kind of different. Like, I remember the, the night before that game, we're in Southern Cal, and I'm sitting there with my dad at one of the tables. You know, our families are in town, so after you get out of that last meeting, we'd go and visit with them a bunch. And I remember sitting there with my dad, who, you know, knows plenty about, you know, the rivalry and, and being at Notre Dame, and I was like, we all know what's at stake, but, like, you come to Notre Dame to beat Southern Cal in that game. Like, you come to Notre Dame to do it out there. And to have the moments we got to, like I, you know, forever burned into my brain is oh, yeah. me and Braxton at the top of the tunnel after that game, chucking down that you at the Trojan side, and then being in the locker room after and just being like Cap and the rest of everyone as we all realized, like, oh my God, like yeah, we really did this, and we're about to go to South Beach. So it's it, it's a week that yeah, we knew the ramifications, but I think USC week stands alone in its own right when you come to Notre Dame. It's, you know, USC, it's Michigan. It's it's those weeks that you kind of get up for on your own because yeah. that means so much just to the team in general. For sure. Who was it on top of the locker in that post-game Zeke. video? Zeke. 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 <laughs> it was definitely Zeke. That's oh, before- definitely one of those ingrained moments forever. You know, Zeke on top of the locker room. And Coach B, I mean, Coach say we're going to South Beach. It was, it was awesome. 
It's a great moment. Now, I want to ask you guys about this year's team, but one of your lasting traditions or, or you know, what, pe what people might remember about you eight years later is Trick Shot Monday. Uh, which one of you guys still has the skills eight years later? Wow. It's been a long time. Really? Man. I, I, I mean, Golik's played yeah, after him, yeah, so... That's well, hard. you know what? I, I will say this. I, I did some like trick shot paper football challenge that, you know, I was doing online with Coach Kelly a while back. And I tried to do it, you know, trick shot Monday style into a cup. And about halfway through, I remembered what was so tough about that is you start to get frustrated and sweaty and yeah. hungry and all these things that went into it. And I remember like, OK, now I remember why we brought so many people on board because we just needed to get the damn thing in and go eat. Yeah. Right. We couldn't uh, we couldn't go eat until we made the shot. Oh, it's it's, all, it's high it's high stakes poker. It is some high pressure stuff, but thankfully we had the uh, we had capable bodies for it back then. I don't know about now. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's wrap up here talking about this year's team a little bit. Cap, you were part of a really talented defensive line. Guys like Lewis Nix, Sheldon Day, Stephon Hewitt. You look at this year's defensive line, still being led by your former position coach Mike Elston. What do you see, and how's it different from when you played? Uh, I've seen some guys. You know, these guys this year they're really they're really physical and they're pretty quick too. Um, you know, I like uh, you know I just love watching them play. I definitely think they remind of a lot of us. But you know, obviously I'm biased. I'm going to say that we're better. I know yeah, everybody's wondering, so I'm just going to throw it out there. I do. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I think we're I think we're better. Of course, no, but uh, but seriously though, it, they they're fun to watch. I think they're really. You know, just see, just seeing Coach Elson's growth from where you know when he was there, when I was there, and to where he is now, it's tremendous. Braxton, a similar question. This year's offensive line, one of the favorites, if not the favorite, to win the Joe Moore Award, even with some recent injuries and reshuffling. What is it that you see that makes this unit so good? You know, I think uh, you know these guys, <clears throat> similar to in 2012 with with Everett. You know, Ian's a playmaker and and. If he gets an opportunity to make a play with his feet, he's going to do that, which makes, you know, it makes your job as an O-lineman pretty difficult at times because you just don't know where he's going to be. Um, but to see how these guys have adapted to that and have allowed him to make plays, I mean, it, it's just a testament to the program and what they've been able to build there. Um, with guys going down, you really haven't seen a drop-off in play. Uh, these guys have come in every week, and, you know, it's been impressive to watch them this year. Mike, I've heard you talk about first-year offensive coordinator Tommy Reese a couple of times, who is, of course, your teammate, quarterback. <laughs> two parts. One, was there ever any doubt Tommy would be a coach? And two, what's he doing to have so, so much success so early in this role as one of the youngest coordinators in the Power Five? I'm just glad you called him Tommy and not Tom. <laughs> yeah, what was that? that I don't know what I'm saying. He's trying to call. age him, man. Trying to age him. He's going to be Tommy forever. We we talked to Ian the other day. I was like, how hard is it to call him Coach Reese? Like, hearing that's still weird to me. Oh, but, oh, yeah. yeah, Coach Reese. But, uh, no, and no, you know what? There was no doubt Tommy was going to be a coach. because And Braxton mentioned it. We had Everett as the starter that season. And Everett was a great player. And Everett brought so many things to the table. But Tommy was kind of our closer that year in a lot of games. Everett got nicked up a couple of times towards the end of the game or or just needed a, a steady hand to come in there because he was a young quarterback. And whenever Tommy was under center, and Braxton can speak to this, you always knew exactly where he was going to be. You always knew we were going to be checked into the right play, and you knew the ball was going to get out on time. Tommy had such a great uh, ability to process the game mentally, and I, I think that's bled over into his coaching style. He's unbelievably prepared. He's absorbed a lot of football from his stop with the Chargers, from his time at Northwestern with Coach Fitzgerald. and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Tommy sat in the locker room with us at one point. It was, you know, one of those days. He roomed with Zach Martin and Chris Watt and Dan Fox and Eifert. So he roomed with a lot of beef. But we had this conversation. If you could come back and play a different position, what would it be? And Tommy Reese's, like, no-hold answer was pulling guard. And so anyone surprised that Tommy Reese is out here running the rock this year with that O-line doesn't really know Tommy Reese. <laughs> Uh, we're we're about out of time here, and Cap, I already know your answer here, but give me one sentence each. 2012 Notre Dame versus 2020 Notre Dame, who wins and why? Uh, 2012 will win. We probably, uh, I'd, I'd say 24 to, 24 to 10. 
just because uh, our defense was real. Y'all, they they they're not going to run the ball on us like they're doing this year. They're, they're, they they can run the ball. They're really can tote the rock this year. But I think our Russian defense that year was pretty un, pretty good. So that's my answer. And obviously, I wasn't going to say different. <laughs> You know, I, I, I got to agree, you know, it's um, obviously I never bet against our team. Um, but to reiterate that defense um, that we had that year was special. And um, so, you know, I would say I, I, I'm like cap, a cap gave up 10. I was going to say like 14 zero, man, hold him to a goose. Egg, but. I appreciate you. <laughs> I was gonna say the real winner of that game would be the fans because they'd be in and out of that stadium in like three and a half hours. It'd basically yeah. be a running clock in that game because yeah. that was all. That was ninety nine percent of what we were doing on offense. But hell yeah, I'm picking us. Us against the world. We got. <laughs> oh, of course we're gonna pick us there. I t- I'm with Cap. I think it's gonna have to be like we're gonna have to keep the score down on this one. We aren't gonna go out there and light anyone up. Timely offense, bunch of big yeah. third downs to Tyler Eifert. We're good to go. Close us out. <laughs> For sure. Sounds good. Catherine Lewis Moore, Braxton Cave, and Mike Golick Jr., three outstanding Notre Dame football players and outstanding Notre Dame alums. Guys, thank you so much for being here today. Appreciate you. you. Thanks, guys. Go Irish. Go Irish.